outside It's so long since we've been Deep in the woods with the fat lad We need to step away from the screens Go pack a bag, whip up some lunch You need a break from the wife's flatulence You've been too long inside, you're about to buzz Just let us out and let us dream And go wherever we want with extra cream All the way to the top And you know we won't stop Cause the penny drop You gotta step away from the screen Under the light of the moon And sometimes you bring bramble head If you're lucky you might get some poon tang It's more likely with Johnny We've seen the way you look at him And the fear in his eyes as he zips up the tent again Just let us out and let us dream And go wherever we want with extra cream All the way to the top And you know we won't stop as the penny drop You gotta step away from the screens Step away from the screens Some say he heavy, some say he old He got extra layers so he don't feel the cold Some say he got the face of a moose He loves to share a tent with the ginger bruise Some say he never shed a tear in his life But we've seen his eyes water and his flatulent wife You know him as Nobby but we call him Lee We all need to step away from Ladies and gentlemen, if you like that music, please give Martin some love down in the comments below. I spoke to him saying I was all excited about going out. And he wrote that in between getting up and doing the school run for his kids. Wrote and recorded it on a ukulele on his iPhone. The man's a bleeding genius. In the comments below, tell Martin what a dude he is. Or a ginger tosser. But mostly a dude. We're back, baby. Right, long and the short of it tonight. I've got me some rum. I've got me some sausage. I've got me a homemade hammock, which I'll just be lounging in. And I'm trying out a new tent, the Lanshan 2 Pro. But best of all, someone's bleeding joined me. Got me a Johnny. <laughs> I've got me a Johnny. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my hammock up. You don't need to see that. It's that bleeding paracord thing I made and then I'm going to set up the Lanshan 2 which I was luckily enough to be given I got given shit from a company called Campers List so um, I'll put it up we'll have a look around it and all that sort of shizzle you know me I don't like to punt stuff but I've been actually wanting to get one of these for an upcoming uh, little adventure so I got it for free happy days anyway I'm waffling like shit now let's get my hammock up I've got my Invisi hammock Let's see. I'll tell you what, John. I don't care what anyone says. A fat lad, oh, that's a little bit wonky. Like Rabsy Nesbitt. <laughs> you ought to see my arse underneath. But check it out. Got me a comfy chair for the evening. I can lay down and relax. John, look at that for a chair. Rabsy Nesbitt. One of them really fat birds in stockings. We're out! Right, let's put this other bleeding thing up. Right, first things first. The Lanshan 2 Pro. As luck would have it, I didn't hit record as I was putting it up. So I'm going to give you a walk round a ready put up tent without you seeing it going up. How long did it take me, John? About five minutes? Five minutes, yeah. About five minutes to put up. I'd never put one up before. I'll take your mooch round. Right. As you know, it's a trekking pole tent. You've got little pockets in the top to fit your trekking poles at 120. You can raise and lower them as you wish to get more ventilation. It's got a 5,000 millimeter hydrostatic head um, and a 20D nylon, silicon coated, whatever you want to call it. Now it is a single skinned tent, which it always concerns me a bit with the condensation issue, but I can't say that until I've had a night and wheezed all night in it and it is going to get cold later, possibly rain. As with the Lanshan one, I'm going to show you at the back because the sun's in my eyes and you won't be able to see squat if I turn around. Right. 
this guy line with this little bit i haven't figured out how that works yet so i will figure it out and i will do it because it's got adjustments top and bottom which and obviously that hooks onto that which i know just don't know how to do it i'm going to look at it now you've got velcro on the seams and a decent vestibule area if you want to start cooking as i said before bear in mind i was given this tent by camperslist.com i'll put a link down below you're going to get an honest review you genuinely are uh, one thing i'm really impressed with now with the uh, three ufl you get a lifetime warranty you get a code on your receipt or the little tab that comes with it scratch that off go online lifetime warranty you can't really argue with that a couple of improvements from the land shan that i found so far you've actually got better tie outs to hold your doors back and your netting back um which is great the land shan one done me great on the coast to coast um but it was just that tiny bit too small again i think you've got different material now on your side tie outs they still will need to be seam sealed but that's you know just a mix of white spirit and silicon and you're away the way i set it up i might show you again in the morning but i ain't taking it down now because you know who puts a tent up twice just for shits and giggles not this call sign i put the ground sheet down first stretched out the corners of the fly sheet pegged that down loosely put the bathtub uh called on which you'll see here there's three cords ground sheet fly sheet bathtub um went round, tightened it all up popped my poles in pegged it out and then down the bottom um just put a peg a little loop to pull that forward i can tighten this up a great deal there wasn't enough pegs for all of the guy lines but that is because i've put a peg down there where you don't need to if you set this configuration up right I struggled with my last one with it, if I'm honest with you, and just ended up pegging out the front. I think I'm just going to end up pegging out the front. Let's have a look inside. Right. Let's get you in here. So as you can see, I'm five foot nine and a fag butt. At least nine inches there. But if my wife's listening, uh, that's about a foot and a half. Um, and I can lay down. I've got however far that is there what six seven inches and same with my feet the other edge my feet are outside at the minute because obviously they're mucky but you've got plenty of room two entrance ways and as you can see here you've got a great little vestibule should you want to cook so yeah absolutely thumbs up but being able to tie these fly nets back is brilliant i'm pretty sure it didn't have that on the first land shan I could be wrong. I'll have to drag it back out and have a look. I might do a side-by-side -side video, but they're two different tents. Why would you? But a single wall construction. Yeah. Another thing I do like, you got these hooks up here. So what you could do is run a line from hook to hook and it'd give you somewhere to dry your undercrackers or your socks if you've been out on a long walk. You've got ventilation at the ends of the tent. So when that is pegged very tight, obviously you're going to get flow through there should the condensation come down it could well roll straight out a lot of air in here this is a three season one i've got and i've got to say i'm bloody impressed at the moment um the last one i had was a flames creed they're exactly the same as a land shan and it really has been a cracking tent my kids use it i use it again with these trekking pole areas you get a little elastic that pulls the bathtub out and the other specs you didn't hear because I forgot to press bleed and record. Um, 950 grams for the tent alone. The one I got did come with the ground sheet, which is a bonus. Um, yeah, lifetime warranty. 950 gram for a two-man tent. Now, two people my side, obviously our love handles a touch because I'm a fat knacker. But it's definitely big enough to fit two people. Definitely big enough for a person and a dog and definitely big enough for a person and their kit. I've just spat all over the screen by the looks of that. I'm impressed with it. I really, really am. But bear in mind I didn't pay for it. 
So look at other reviews, look at other people. I was gonna get this regardless and someone uh, contacted me and offered me it to try. You know, I wanted to go on a bleeding long walk. I'm going on a long walk. I'm going on another couple of hikes. Be rude not to really, wouldn't it? Let me know what you think. So just updating you as I go. You've got toggles on the top. So you could theoretically run a ridge line or tie it up to a tree or whatever. And something I do like, now that I've got a couple of pegs off of Johnny, when you put the pegs in at the side, it pulls the top and the bottom out in one hit, which is really good. Of course, the first camp we get, and it's either really thick snow or really light howl. It's snowing. It's snowing. I don't give a shit, to be honest with you. I'm out. Pack up, Sherry. I've got to cook some sauce later. Pack up. You can do what you like, mate. I'm, a, I'm golden. How are you liking that underquilt? I've tried it yet, have I? He ain't tried it yet. Tried to hook a brother up, didn't I? Found well, mate. So yeah, have a look at what he's rocking. Living the dream there, John. What setup you got, mate? Just a bed. Some... I'm in my hammock, homemade one by um, some really fat lad. Oh, two seconds. Yep, carry on. Um, I've uh, borrowed his uh, under quilt. One tigress. It is. Got Minus three, five. Three by three tarp over the top. I've pitched it really down, really down low. Not even English. Hopefully it <coughs> avoids any wind coming underneath me. Pretty much it, mate. Good to be back out there. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I've, I'm, you know, no, I'm not going to say that. Cool. It's all right. Look, I'm injured. <laughs> Tommy Fun. <laughs> Mate, we're back out. We're back out. Anyhow, I might make me a brew. Do you want a brew, John? I'm all right at the moment. He's all right at the moment. Basically, oh yeah, I've got something else I'm testing as well. Because, um, in fact, should I mention what you might be doing and what I am doing? What am I doing? Yeah. I'm not doing. You're not doing it? I don't know what you're doing. Right. Johnny has still not decided whether or not he's, uh, well, we all know he ain't truly manly. <laughs> but because we've been cramped up so bleeding long, because we haven't done any long walks since August, whenever it was we done around the island, I need a challenge. So I've come up with an idea. I've invited Johnny along. Um, I've got, my brother says he's going to do it. He won't do it. If you watch this, Kev, I know you won't do it. Mark, the bloke that plays the music, also says he wants to do it. I stand a chance of him doing it, although he won't complete it because he's fat and ginger. Johnny has also said he'd do it. Now, Johnny has done something similar before, and I know he's a stubborn git, and he stands half a chance. But the idea is I'm cycling the King Alfred's Way, which is 220 mile off-road, Starts in Winchester, goes up round Stonehenge, round Swindon. You cover the Ridgeway, you cover the South Downs way, and then back up in Win uh, back up in Winchester. Normal charity I'll be doing it for combat stress. Johnny's up for it. You're up for it, ain't you, John? Not sure. Looking to do it in four days. So it don't sound a lot. Fifty-five mile a day. It's like that. And I hate cycling. Proper hate cycling. But. I've got a new tent I can use. We might just bivy camp. It ain't been decided. I only thought of it last week. Um, you're up for it, ain't you? Not sure, mate. But I've said it on here now, so I can't not do it. So first half of June, we're cycling the King Alfred's Way. Today is a day full of gifts. John just giving me a little uh, seat look. So you can lean back when you're sitting down. Happy bleeding days. Mate, happy Christmas. Happy. We haven't been out since Christmas, have exactly. we? Exactly. He bought it for me for Christmas. Isn't that sweet of him? He's a lovely little fella. Special little fella, but lovely. Hello. Um, yeah, the other thing I'm trying out today, because obviously I need to pack everything onto a bike, I've wanted a lightweight cook set. Now, normally I'd use my titanium plate, but as you may or may not have seen in a couple of my other videos, that absolutely sucks when you put it on top of a gas stove because it only heats the bit where the flame hits. So I've got 
not generic it's um a little cook set which i'm going to fire up in a minute maybe fry a sauce or two what fry a sauce john mm. so yeah it comes with a little uh 750 mil pot and a frying pan comes with a load of other crap you ain't going to need um it gives a little spatula type thing and bowls and a soup spoon because i never leave home without a soup spoon you like a soup spoon don't you what's the difference between a soup spoon and a dessert spoon it, it looks a little bit like a ladle and is a lot bigger and don't make out like you ain't the king of spooning he's sitting in his little chair and all look it's all right john isn't it it's all right mate it's all right isn't it <laughs> just waiting for that to go yeah. So that's that. We're set up really early. We never set up this early. Apart from the last two times when we set up this early. I might go sit in my homemade hammock and see how many more knots come undone. Do you want to try, John? No, thanks. Go on, give it a go. Looks, what looks could go very wrong? It's very comfortable. We're out. Okay. Um, that's going to be wobbly, isn't it? I'll try not to move. Ah, oh, sodger. Um, yeah, what else have I buggered up today? Couldn't find my normal run-of-the-mill sleeping bag, which is like some little down thing, cheapo, but works a treat. You know, I'm staying that until minus figures. It's meant to be zero or minus one tonight. What is it, John? Minus one. Minus one. How warm is it at the minute? Minus one. <laughs> you don't like the cold, this boy. Um, couldn't find it. Didn't want to take the Arctic bag out because it's mahoosive and I didn't want to bring a big pack. So I pulled my summer sleeping bag, which is generally good down to about 10 degrees, which is obviously possibly 11 degrees too little. Um, I do sleep hot, I am fat, and I've got a jumper. I've also brought with me my snug pack um, blanket, which I always bring with me. Um, so yeah, there's another 10 degrees. But I'm a prat all the same. Knew it was gonna be cold. Do you want me to get you one? No. Johnny, I'm a man of the wild. I would never get a woman to bring me anything while I'm out being a man. I would. I, sorry, let me rephrase that. I didn't mean woman like that. I meant anyone. Woman. Mate, I should have said your woman. She could happily come up here. <laughs> He's a dirty little boy. Do you like his uh, Sainsbury's carrier bag adaptation there? What are you doing there, John? Seems so. His, his hammock's sticking out just, and that's knacker from the end and it might rain later. Basically, I'm too lazy to move this along. There's nothing wrong with that, John. That's my head end, so if I get a little drip. Better end. So yeah, I am truly loving being back out. You loving being back out? Nice, yeah. Were you just playing with your nuts? It feels like these knots are coming undone again, but they're not. Oh, they're not. See what I did there? Didn't mean to. You're not impressed with my hammock, are you? No. Have a sit in my hammock, John. I don't want to. Come on, I want you to sit in my hammock. It just reminds me of them. Yeah, but I made the them hammock, fat John. Lasses with the old fat... Well, I'm a fat lad with the old, you the old, know. Uh, Come on. What's it called? Just stockings. <sighs> Fishnets. Give the viewers what they want. Oh, you bastard. Oh, if mate. you sit forward a bit, then I'm that don't... i have to move this way, because it's cutting into me. Oh, yeah. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> it looks so comfortable. Cheers, no. <laughs> don't it look... <laughs> Isn't that comfortable, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I can't even have a beer, yeah. <laughs> if you sit your ass forward more, don't dig into your legs. Yeah, cheers for that. Don't come in the fucking instruction manual. <laughs> mate... <laughs> Some fat lad just tied knots in some string. <laughs> uh, got a good view here though. It is, it's a shame you can't see Hearst Pierpoint and that. That's the siege just there, people. Right, just sussed out the front guy line. There was a loop tied in it. Not quite big enough for my peg, so I untied it on both ends. You needed that loop. So if anyone else is going to get confused, if you buy one of these, because it proper baffled me. Baffled me, John, didn't it? For a long time. Baffled me like. So, what you have, one adjuster up top. That comes down to a loop on the single string. And then on the double string, 
that clips on to the end. Sorry about all the mess I've been cooking. Um, and you can tighten, <laughs> you can tighten it up down there. So yeah, nice and simple really when you think of it. To be honest, I'm still going to keep a spare peg in there because when you get in, that'll be a bugger to fiddle around and clip up. It was with the other one anyway. I just used to peg it to the deck. Bit of elastic. Anyway, so far, proper impressed with this. And now it means I've got enough pegs for the guy lines. I'd swap it for bigger pegs. If I was you, get longer pegs. Oh, bastard. Right, just making a quick brew. So I thought I'd show you my new cook's kit if you're interested in that sort of thing. Ain't expensive, not expensive at all, but it might, you never know, fill a hole. As you can see, ain't even opened. Oh, that's wedged. So, non-stick. You've got a frying pan, which I'll be testing out on the sausages later. And if I can cook on there, without them sticking and without just the bottom being eated, I'll be happy. It's only little, only light. All the crap you do get that you don't need. Obviously it's a sponge. A carabiner, that'll come in handy somewhere. Get a spork, little metal spork, which yeah, come in handy I suppose. Little spatula, that'll come in handy. Come in handy. Come in handy, mate. <laughs> You've got what I think, and I could be wrong, is if you've been out on a multi-day hike, it's just to lift up your todger <laughs> with your undercarriage in there, so you don't need to touch it with your hands. So you just wash it. Um, it does look surgical, that, doesn't it? Fit my undercarriage in that easy. Well, well, yours, yeah. It's like a butter mushroom. A couple of plastic bowls. If you've got dogs with you, I suppose. Only little dogs, obviously. I'm talking really little dogs. And a pot. So, I'm going to boil up some water on a pot. That's what I'm going to do. Because I'm waffling like shizzle now. And see if this don't blow up on me. Love gas. It's my favourite thing. I'll put it in the pot. Now also, my um, coffee is just... I don't want to bring plastics in anymore, I nearly set my beard on fire. It's just coffee and uh, white in a mix. Obviously I ain't measured it, so God knows what it's going to be like. Now, does this lid fit on there, John, you reckon? Lid does fit on. Now, I know what you're saying. You've got your titanium. I want to try it out. So I want to cook sausages. I like sausages. Very impressed with... The Lapland and my boy bought me for my birthday or Father's Day, whenever it was, it was a long time ago. Christmas. Um, yeah, proper impressed. That 15 quid I think they are, John, aren't they? He's just sitting there nodding at me going, what a plank sitting in the woods talking to a camera. Probably with a runny nose. Let's have a look. Oh, we have slight bubblage. Now we have hit a little bit of bad luck as well. Um, one of the trees has come down in this area, lovely, as you can see, beautiful area. But what it does mean now is we can see Johnny's tarp from where people walk dogs and stuff. Shouldn't really be a problem because we ain't thugs, you know. But always got to be wary of it. And now I need to get up and get that without knocking this over. What could go wrong? GoPro, stop recording. Well, that's hubbly bubbling away. Seems to have done a good job. A quick look. Probably better do that when I'm open. No scorch marks, no nothing. I'll tell you what is absolutely cake and arse. That. Got a cheap one of them, God knows how long ago, to fit on the bottom of the gas canister. Pants. I would rip it to bits, but I don't know where I bought it. Right. Two coffees coming up with possibly the world's worst coffee. Where's me spoke gone? 
Let me spoke, John. There's me spoke, John. I know why I didn't want to use this bleeding jar now. Just remembered. Because my spoke don't fit in it. You got a big old spoke on you, you? Do like a big old spoke. Yeah, that definitely don't fit. Oh, mate. At least it's a spoke and not got holes in the front. Because that'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Yeah, have a little bit more. Sorry. it. That looks about right. <laughs> if this works, I'll be over the moon, but I wouldn't be able to recreate it. Do, do, do. Got little measuring increments on the inside, which is always, I'll tell you what, that ain't come out too bad, John. Yeah, numb nuts. Well, I know I you thought I was going to bring it to you. It is cold, I have got numb nuts. Yeah, it's alright, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that burn you. No, it's hot. Chin chin, old boy. Cheers to you. Back out. Hot. I'm having a mare. Didn't record the tent getting put up because, you know, I'll try that again. Thanks going on, John. You can tell I have it. It's kicked me in the dick. You can tell I ain't been out in a while. Didn't record filming the tent because I'm a bell end. I haven't had my microphone plugged in for all the other filming, so no doubt the audio quality, if I include it's going to be shite. To be fair, I ain't filmed a lot with it. Turned my camera off, just as he stamped on a bleeding log, which smacked me straight in the head. Knocked some sense into him. What? What's going on, John? What's going on? First day back after a long time, isn't it? But, have a look at where we are. Ain't too shabby, Jonathan, is it? Oh, mate, look at that sun. The rays coming through the trees, beautiful. It certainly ain't a bad crack. Just going to get some more wood. So, we'll catch you, Ron. That don't suck, does it? See over there? What a sunset that's going to be. Beautiful. It's a shame you're not going to be able to make a lot of that out, but beautiful. It's going to be a cold night tonight. Certainly, if you listen to Johnny, I don't think I'll get a time lapse here because I've got no way of propping my phone up. If I do, you'll see it. Nearly time for food. How about this for a cracking little spot for a solo camp? Not sure if you can see, but you can span them two trees. No one's ever finding you here. You've got sea views, sunset just there. Out of the way of everyone. Sheltered, oh, it's all sheltered. Cause that dip, I think these are old runs for the uh, sea fortifications. They're just all mossed over and grown over. As you can see by all this lot here. Beauty little spot. Things you find when you're chasing a sunset. Happy days. So, I've got sausages to go on here. I haven't bought any oil because it's meant to be non-stick. And I've just put my bleeding knife away, John, and I've realised that all six of my sausages have been stuck together. I don't 
don't normally like being too brutal with my sausage, but let's get you down to a nice cookie cook and we'll see how she goes. That's good, at least they didn't land upside down in the mud. But the good news is it comes with a little spatula, John. A little spatula. Spatula. Yep, well. Sticky. It is a bit sticky, mate, yeah. That non stick ain't, ain't too non stick. Have you got any? No. Didn't think you would have. You have to use the oil off the sausages. Well, that's what I'm hoping for, but at the moment. It seems to be having the exact same problem as my titanium plate. Obviously, you should really use oil. Didn't bring any suet, didn't bring anything like that. But, yeah, they're definitely sticking. Looks like we've got sausage meat at the minute. Yeah, it's non stick. It is non stick, mate, yeah. But we're certainly, especially so I can have sausages on the King Alfred's way. <laughs> That's not got some beer you could use. To joke aside, I might actually take a little bit of water in there. Just some water. Or a tiny bit. A smattering. A bit more than that, come on. How much? Tip bit in there, fucking. Oh, you sling a bit more in there. Oh, you can't. <laughs> Come on. That'd be enough. Surely. Boy, boiled sausages. Well, they do. Yeah, true. So far, not so impressed. At least we've got a fire on. This is pretty nippy. Oops, sorry, I've got to talk to you. It's a bit cold, isn't it? You're on the Wayfarer. I'm on the Wayfarer. Oh, it's good to get around a fire, isn't it? So, the verdict on the pan. It's working. I mean, it is cooking them, but as you can see, that centre is just getting fragged off of the uh, gas burner. Should have added a bit of oil, I know that. I know that, John. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to be clearing that mess up when we're uh, out and about on the bikes. Would work fine with a meth stove, I reckon, because it's more evenly spread and maybe even on the embers. But for a gas stove, you can smell that burning, can't you? Not good. Anyway, sauces are getting cooked. Just to demonstrate, if you look where that's boiling, that is boiling right dead centre in the middle and not around the outside it just don't spread the heat out the search continues Jonathan Gonex lightweight Gonex is it Gonads Gonex it's Gonex Gonads yeah all right for meths no good for gas cookers although it did take the water but any eat a boil water wouldn't it that's right mate there he is, look. True camper, me. You definitely can't, mate. You can't for the me. Mm. Here's the end result. Get of the way. Ah, ah. Absolutely obliterated centre where that flame is. I'll try my next lot of sauce on the actual embers, but no doubt it'll scrub off, but I wouldn't say it's non-stick anymore. Shame. 
Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Still good little camping pots though. I do like the saucepan. Oh yeah, we should have tried that out. I might do that on the fire for me couscous. Or just have double the amount of sausage, you know, because I like meat. Loves a bit of meat. Good sauce. Not bad. Finding out all sorts of stuff. Johnny's been researching his heritage and he's um he's pretty convinced that he's a Viking. I'm not convinced, I know. You know? Yeah. My surname Hon. Yeah? Travelling people. And no. not <laughs> <laughs> How's your sauce? Very nice, mate. Peppery, but nice. Come on, my food's not even cooking. So come on, tell me more about your Viking heritage. Well, we're uh, originally from Norway. <laughs> Travelled over here just before 1066. Actually uh, met King Alfred. All right. So it's going to be like a bit of a reunion for you then when we go biking. Yeah. Say hello to him. Digging into your wayfarers, look. No, I'm just going to check it. It's all right. You generally find when you stir it, all the really hot stuff's at the bottom. Yeah, I know. I'll I'm sorry. Have, uh, probably have really bad guts in the morning. It is open, eh? Nature's TV rearing, look. Rum and coke on the go. <laughs> That's going to end really, really oh, badly. Yeah, badly. Right, Thor, I'm going to dig in. So they're definitely doing better on the embers. That's off. Nice even uh, cook on them. So it'd work on a meth stove. Perhaps it's more to do with my stove than it is the pots and pans I'm using. But yeah. I don't know about you, John, but that has been just what the doctor ordered for me. Yeah, it was good sex. <laughs> it's only because you got there. <laughs> nah, mate, what a night. The stars are out in full. Crystal clear skies, rum and coke in hand. Baltic. Fire on the go. Johnny's gibbering. Happy days. Not a lot to say, mate, really, is there? No, we're just sort of hypnotised by this fire because it's been so long. Tell them how cold you are. I'm pretty cold. I'm that, I'm that cold, my arse cheeks are clapping. Stands like chopsticks, mate. Not a lot to say. Got a star laps going. Probably won't be in a video because it's a pain in the arse, but you never know. You might have one. Gonna rip the sack in an hour or two, I reckon. What do you reckon? Definitely not. <laughs> About 10 minutes. He's cold, bless him. What is it now? About two degrees, isn't it? Ain't exactly freezing. Don't know, mate, I'm not a human thermometer. Oh no, you're a dipstick, ain't you? That is a lot fucking stronger. So. Top night, sitting by the fire, eating meat, chatting shit with John. He's asleep now, so I'm in here. Got a big blow up mat, inflatable pillar. Still loads of room above me head, loads of room down by my feet. Yeah, proper like in this tent. Fingers crossed the condensation won't be too bad. And I'm here in my drastically underrated sleeping bag, hoping it ain't too bad of a night because I think I might have misjudged it. We'll find out, won't we? Might have to get up and do some press-ups in the morning or in the middle of the night. I've had too much to drink, as usual. God, it's great to be back out. I'll be catching you in the morning. I've got to say, that pan set scrubbed up all right, you know. Um, don't like the gas, which is a bit of a shame. Looks like I 
could always use it and take mess with me instead, but don't make me buy a jet boil or a fucking maple fire thingy, whatever it's called. Anyhow, see you in the morning. Morning. Oh. Well, it wasn't a terrible night's kip. I didn't freeze, so the sleeping bag formed really well. Got cold underneath because, luckily for me, my air bed kept going down. A lot. I mean, I'm laid on the floor now, and that's a bit nippy underneath. But, anyway, not too bad. Loads of room in this tent. Um, condensation, yes. As you can see... Yeah, it's, it's not the best for condensation on the inside. It's not dripping on me in any way, shape or form. And it's just a bit of a light a drizzle. But um, I would imagine if you opened up both doors and let the wind blow through for half hour, it would soon clear all that up. But it does mean that you stand a chance of putting away a wet tent. But all in all, I've been proper impressed with her. Depending on how you camp, if you do use it on hikes and you have got a chance to dry it out in the morning, or a microfiber cloth or something, bring with you, and you should be all right. Rained a little bit this morning, nothing too drastic, but no leaks, no nothing. I'm happy. I suppose I better get my ass out of bed and make a coffee now. And I've been brewing a pee for about a good two hours. Still pretty cold, like. Anyway. Well, Johnny's got a brew on. It's still a bit brisk. What'd you say it got down to last night, minus one? Yeah, I think so. So it was a fairly cold night. Not absolutely Baltic, but fairly cold. He's on the limits. Johnny was on his limit. What do you reckon of that underquilt though, mate? Right. Not a bad buy for the price, is it? Yeah, definitely. Just a bit bulky. It's got upside down. Yeah, good at it. Hello. I might put a little picture in here, but Johnny fashioned a dick hole in a two litre water bottle, and I can definitely see at least a pint of exceedingly yellow liquid sticking and, out the bottom of his And tank. it wasn't big enough owl. Oh, oh, oh. Really? Um, my underpowered sleeping bag actually done really bleeding well for a summer bag. I did have, like, you know, shirt, base layer, and a jumper on, putting down jacket on this morning. Bloody air mat kept going down, John. That was a pain in the ass. I could tell. Oh, I had, had to keep getting up. I chucked the bag away in the end and blew it out with my chops. I thought, let it rot. Let it rot. But anyhow, start to pack up in a minute, just letting the tent blow through to try and dry off some of the condensation, which wasn't terrible. A fine layer. Um, all in all, proper happy with that. Because I didn't show you putting the tent up, because, once again, I'm a bit of a bell end. What I might do, if you want me to, I can do a video of actually erecting the thing. Um, and at least you'll be able to see the guy lines working properly and stuff like that, rather than... Well, you won't see the guy lines working not properly, because I didn't film it going up. Anyhow, if you want to see it, yeah. I don't know how much more of this I'm going to be filming. I'm going to have my coffee. I'm going to pack all the junk away, pheasant. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. If they were still in season, I'd get my catapult out, but I ain't, so I won't. Um, yeah, wicked night. Great to be back out. Tidy up me admin. Might even have porridge. Don't know, should I have porridge? You can have porridge if you want. I don't know whether I should, I've got to be at work. Anyhow. Probably film a little bit on the walkout. 
What do you reckon? No filming from this guy. Johnny's giving up YouTube. You might still film a bit, eh? Yeah, I just ain't got time. He Bus says that. Busy what, chap, you know. What it is, is because he's not getting the subs he wants to get. He told me that last night. He, he can deny it now. He's lost a lot during lockdown because he ain't been getting out. So give him some love. No. Johnny knows best. Oh, don't give him some love. Go over there and call him a twat. <laughs> but we need more Johnny films. That's what we need. That's a bit weird. With this one as well, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, buy me a coffee, all that tripe. What I will show you, actually, is... That non-stick pan didn't actually scrub up too bad in the end, so there might be hope for it. I do think it's just those bleeding things are crap for frying on. Might be time for a better stove, you know, with a wider base and a different burn pattern on it. Or just go back to meths, which I much, much, much prefer. Waffling crap. I'm going to start putting stuff away. Update then on the old um, condensation issue. Had this open about half hour now, both the doors and completely dry. So that is a bonus. That is a real bonus. It didn't drip on you, you've got enough air clearance so it don't affect you when you're getting up and moving around. And it dries really, really, really quickly. So, happy days. I'm actually really impressed with that little tent. I'm in two minds whether or not to use that for my bike packing trip or just a normal tarp setup because um, it does pack down really small and I've got a bike to carry it but it's not really inconspicuous when you're stealth camping so uh, I'll make my mind up I've got some other walks we've got some walks coming up John haven't we? No. you don't want to walk anymore? my pressure <laughs> What was wrong with walking last time? Oh, only the fact that I couldn't walk for about a week afterwards. But I'm a little bit, a little bit soft. Yeah, soft Johnny. Soft Johnny. Just so you get the measure of Johnny, I'll show you the size of his dick hole. Yeah, that's right, ladies. That is right. I made that. <laughs> Here's his dick hole. He's so, so happy with his dick hole he is. Anyway, I need to put this tent away. I'm not filming that. That's where I was. Try that again. That's where I was. Johnny. Fire was over there. Leave no trace. We're getting out of here. It looks like just before the rain comes. And that was a much needed break. Um, good to be back out. Now we just need to get some camping trips planned and a bit of training for the King Alfred's Way that Johnny is doing. Um, yeah, because 55 mile a day off-road, that's going to hurt, you know. I hate cycling. I do. I hate it. More than two shakes. Right, on route out now. Makes a change walking out of camp, and Johnny's got male trousers on. Revolution race. Revolution race. Sponsored by. If only. Right, on that note, I'm going to say ta ra!